We're currently entering one of the most interesting times in the crypto gaming market, a time of unprecedented liquidity. Today, I wanted to touch base on Gala Games as well as the current market trends because things are getting a little bit crazy. I'm talking about tens of hundreds of tokens that are going to be launching in the coming months for crypto gaming. If you enjoy this kind of content, if you like breakdowns on the crypto gaming markets, as always, feel free to go ahead, like, and subscribe. We bring it to you every single day. We have a goal to become the number one crypto gaming channel in the space, and we're going to go ahead and do it. So feel free to go ahead and support us and let's get into it. So number one thing I want to talk about here is where Gala Games is in relation to the markets currently. Gala Games is a cryptocurrency, came out quite a bit ago, back in 2021, 2020, had its big, big run up to stardom. Since then, Gala Games has slowed down quite substantially as many of the post-2021 bull market plays have begun to take prominence in our crypto space. So what does all of this mean for Gala Games? Does it mean that Gala is not going to a dollar that, that it's not going to have its glory day? No, it doesn't mean that at all. It does, however, mean that the current market conditions are not favorable for where Gala Games is right now. But this could be good for you because we could use this knowledge to go ahead and time when it would actually make sense to own something like Gala Games. So let's go where the market is right now. There are a lot of tokens that are going to be coming out very, very soon. There are many coins that have begun to be announced. I mean, we have Mon Protocol being one of the behemoths. We have Block Games, Portal Coin being a very similar Gala representative going out there and launching. We have Zai that has already launched and is absolutely massive. Many coins are beginning to flood the market in what is currently a liquidity craze. There is a meta right now in the crypto space, and this is one that's a little bit scary. It's called the pre-sale meta, where people are literally just putting a contract address on their Twitter and people are sending millions of dollars. In fact, we recently learned today that Mackie Big Brother, I don't know if that's how you say it, but he went ahead, he posted a ticker symbol up there and posted an address and they've raised $30 million for their pre-sale. No pitch deck, no whitelist, nothing, <laughs> nothing. When you're going over and telling people about your crypto projects, let's say we're trying to make up a reason for why someone should hold Gala Games, that reason should be predominantly not utility basis. Unfortunately, people right now, they're moon boys. And when we go to conferences like GDC, we learn that there is still a heavy divide in terms of Web3 and Web2. There is a significant lack of gaming talent in the crypto gaming space. Of course, you know, that's not something that is like brand new information to everybody, but it is something that is to be noted that right now people are not here for the games. They are here to flip. Like, let's be honest. People are here to flip crypto gaming tokens for 10X, 25Xs, 50Xs, 100Xs. So being of that mindset, you need to understand what kind of catalyst can come to go ahead and create buying pressure for something like Gala Games. And, and that comes from liquidity events. Liquidity events are events where things just change. The entire industry just changes on a whim. We had this with whitelists, where a lot of people were beginning to enter the NFT markets. It was around somewhere December to January where everybody was talking about whitelists, and now you had to farm them, and that was the next frontier. And then it just died down. We had one bad mint. Nobody talked about whitelist anymore. Now everybody's talking about tokens. Feels like we're all VCs now. We're all investing into tokens with all these different launch bets. We've got C to five. We've got Xborg, Elixir, JGBT, Ape Terminal. I could talk all day about all the different launch pads that exist in the crypto gaming space. You know, it is important to talk about this because now that we've entered this cycle of the market, we're going to begin to see a lot of brand new tokens hit astronomical FDVs. And I'm talking about FDVs as in fully diluted valuations, billions of dollars worth of FDV. And if we look at Gala's FDV right now, uh, you're going to see that it is somewhere around that $1.9 billion mark, which is good for you. It is good for you if you're someone holding Gala because once all these tokens launch and once people get their liquidity from all these brand new fresh tokens, what's going to happen is at some point, the music's going to stop. And once that music stops, once launches stop being the hot new thing, they're going to end up seeping some of those profits into some of the larger crypto gaming coins in the space. And if Gala can begin to cement itself once again as a crypto gaming token, which I don't think of Gala as a gaming token anymore. I see it as an L1 token. You know, Bitbender says it's the daddy of all Deepin, which I do agree. I mean, it is the daddy of Deepin. It's the one that started the crypto gaming node meta. So that is the first mover's advantage that they do have. And it's not to say that they're too late to the market. There's no way they can succeed. There are plenty of projects. For example, Ronin, the Ronin network that has performed excellent over the course of this bear market to bull market early cycle. There is definitely a lot of potential there for games 
games like Mirandus within the Gala Games ecosystem to create a resurgence in interest within their gaming departments. But it really just depends on where Gala wants to end up going here. Uh, the clear direction here is that Gala Music is a clear focus. Gala Film, it's beginning to get some attention. They did just have a hackathon for Gala Chain. There's a clear pivot to the L1 space where Gala is beginning to cement themselves with the technology that they think is going to be revolutionary. They think Hyperledger Fabric, it's something that people can co on, code on. It is the easiest language to use that will onboard those Web2 projects. They have gone ahead and hinted, you know, manufacturers with tracking, et cetera, et cetera, being a use case that can be used on Gala Chain, which is something that I have covered on my DeFi channel in the past. We talked about Adara and the Adara supply services where they went ahead and, you know, tracked the supply chain for several places, Atma being one of those places. So this technology does exist. There is tracking out there within cryptocurrencies. I don't necessarily see it as being that catalyst that gets us to the next level, but I do see it as a proof of partnerships. Partnerships are a massive narrative in the crypto space in general. If you know someone, if you know the guy that everybody wants to be with, then you're going to be the top dog. We're all in an attention economy at this point. And so if we find these trends when they're happening, when these liquidity events are happening, which I imagine the next major liquidity event for these earlier crypto gaming coins, such as Gala, will be sometime in summer. It's just going to happen in summer, June, July, August. That's going to be kind of the time when you begin to look back at some of these coins after you've made some significant profit on the earlier coins. It is much easier to put in a significant amount of capital into something like Gala versus something that is brand new to the space. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. There's just more liquidity on Gala versus other coins. So at some point, people will begin to pay attention once again to Gala. It is just up to Catalyst here to see whether or not Gala Chain can really cement itself during this little period of time. Because we went ahead, we went to GDC, the Game Developers Conference, where Gala actually had a $1 million hackathon. And by the way, shout out to NFTD because they won the competition $250,000 with an awesome tower defense game. Shout out to them. I love them. I think the Gala Games community always knows how to build utility. And that's something that I've got to go ahead and call out there. But here's the thing that you need to take from this. They didn't really have much of a presence in terms of the actual conference. They didn't show up to the conference. There was no Gala booth. In terms of side events, they pretty much just had that hackathon. So it seems clear to me that they are putting much more focus on the chain side of things. And I see Gala really transitioning into somewhat of a DeFi product, which is going to be interesting. It, it creates a lot of new narratives that could possibly be capitalized on during the course of this bull cycle. It just makes it a little bit more complicated to pinpoint what exactly you'd be looking forward to in something like Gala. So what I say, Gala is a bad buy where it is right now at 6.5 cents. I don't think it's a bad buy. I think, you know, Gala long term will probably do well. If you're someone that's new to crypto, I tell them the same thing. Don't even bother with the new cryptocurrencies. I mean, yes, this is not financial advice and, you know, do whatever you want. But if you get into newer crypto coins, there's a lot of things stacked against you, namely vesting, vesting from seed round investors, from private investors, from many different investors inside of the ecosystem. Airdrop, right? Play to airdrop is a massive meta. But if you don't participate in play to airdrop and you just buy the coins after they launch, well, that's a lot of people that all of a sudden have tokens that they can sell on you. That's the unique perk that, you know, assets like Gala, Alluvium have, whereas they go ahead and create opportunities where many of these people have already dumped their coins. Sure, is Gala dumping their coins? Probably, right? They've got to sustain their business. And that's still something that you should keep in account. If you have a node ecosystem, there will be sell pressure no matter what way you try to spin it. But it does put out there that a good amount of the supply has already kind of run its course. It is a more mature project. Are you going to see crazy gains this cycle? I don't know. I don't really see it. But I do think that as somewhere that's like a, I, I'd call it a boomer coin. As a boomer coin, I think Gala's got it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you think I'm right with my predictions here? Is the June, July meta going to be a thing after the whole huge, huge pre-sale seed investment allocation, new coin rounds? Let me know in the comments section. Until the next time, I hope you learned something. Stay classy. And that's all.